tidy up of my craft room and I've got lots and lots of tags. Um, most of these I've made myself. There are tags that I've been sent in swaps and happy mail from other people and they sort of get pinned on notice boards and tucked away in drawers and they're sort of all over the place and when I've been sorting out today I've found so many of them that I've decided I want to put them all together somewhere where I can just look at them en masse and enjoy them without them getting squashed up and bent and little bits starting to fall off them. So I've decided to make um, a little journal basically out of a book. This is a hardback book from a charity shop and I'm just going to use them, um, use the pages in this book just as, as a way of storing these tags. It's a perfect size. And I'll get I'll decorate the cover and we'll put a closure on it. And it just might be a nice way of keeping things together because we're always looking for something, some way of organising our projects a little bit better. So I'm just going to clear these out of the way and then we'll make a start. Right, so I've got my hardback book here. Um, they say this one, I think, cost me 99 pence from a charity shop. And the size of it, let's just measure it for reference, is 14 centimetres by 21. And that, that suits me fine because the average size of my tag is going to fit nicely on a page inside there. And I've done a little bit of preparation beforehand. And what I've done is, because obviously we're going to be adding a lot of bulk by putting these tags in, I've taken out approximately sort of every other page. I've just gone through the book and I've just ripped out sort of every other page just to thin it down um, a little bit. This will give some space for, for the extra bulk that we're going to add by gluing or sticking in these tags. But I'm not going to throw these away. Book pages always come in handy for lots of different things. So I'm just going to put those to one side for the time being. And the other thing that I want to do, which again I've made a little bit of a start with, is now that I've ripped out every other page, I've stuck two pages together. Um, I'm just doing this with, uh, this is the Dilusions glue stick, it's, it's a good glue stick. You could use um, a matte medium, a gel medium, something like this, the, the decoupage glue. I, I can't be bothered to wait for a wet glue to dry so I'm just going through the book with this glue stick I mean any glue stick will do this just happens to be the one that I've got and I'm covering one of the pages like that and then just making sure that they're lined up together pressing them down and then moving on to the next pair. And this will just give the pages a little bit more substance um, to hold, as, as, you know, to hold our tags. And I'm considering that I might put a bit of gesso on as well, just to sort of knock back the text print that's on there. And by having these pages glued together in pairs, again, it just gives them a little bit more body because book paper is quite thin. Okay, so I've gone through my book and I've been st I've stuck all the pages together in pairs now, and so each one of those is it's just stiffened it up a little bit better. Um, still a little bit damp, um, a bit tacky around the edges off the edge of the glue stick, um, but it's it's soon drying and the first few are, are dry. And what I'm going to do next is a, a thin coat of gesso over the pages, um, just to disguise the text a little bit I'm, we're not interested in reading the book but you know when we're looking at the tags but it'll be nice to see the text print just showing through a little bit so I've got a bit of white gesso today I'm using the Pabeo gesso I've got some in my palette and I'm just going to roughly go over my pages this doesn't have to be perfect um, it's, it's just a bit of a background effect but the treatment that we're giving the page and it just knocks that text back a little bit it seals the the paper also um if we decide we want to decorate it maybe we want to do a bit of painting or something on these pages 
haven't decided yet um, whether I'm actually going to embellish the pages in any way before I put the tags on. But I'm just going to do that on, on each set of pages, drying in between with my heat tool. It's a very thin coat, so it won't take long to dry. I'm just going to continue like this all the way through the book. Um, I mean, you can do this as you need each page. If you've only got a few tags, just prepare the pages that you need. And then the next time you want to come to it, you, you can prepare some more pages. I'm just going to find this easier to do all this prep work now. Um, I've got a fair number of tags to go in this book anyway. Um, but So I'll get on with that and then I'll come back again afterwards. Right, so I'm back. I've finished um, putting a coat of gesso on all my pages and it's it's dry. I've dried them all off with the heat tool. And once again, this just adds a little bit more body. It, it stiffens the pages up a little bit. And I've had a look at the tags that I've got. And I still feel um, that it, I want a little decoration on the page behind. I mean, I, you could just go ahead now and, and put your tags in. But I think I, I might regret it and, and I want just some simple decoration in the background. So I've got a, a stencil. I thought I could do some stamping, but I thought, no, I'll do a stencil. This is a large stencil from Joggles. It's one of their 9 by 12 inch stencils. And I've chosen this because it's just a good all over pattern. And it's also big enough that I can put it across the double page spread because I just want to sort of ink around the edges of my pages just um, so that there's a, just a bit more interest around the edges when my tags are in place. So I had a look through my Distress Oxide inks and I've decided on frayed burlap. I've got a couple of browns but the, the frayed burlap I like. It's got a slight green tone to it but it, it complements book paper quite well. The vintage photo I thought was a little bit orangey so I've decided to go for this one. And really I'm just going to Put my stencil in place I'm using a foam applicator and I'm just going to stencil through around the edges just quite lightly. Don't need to go into the centre of the pages too much because the tag's going to be there. This is just to add a little extra colour and detail around the edges. You do need to decide whether you want to go into the middle or whether just to go around the edge of the double page spread. Um, I'm thinking, looking at where my tags are going to go, that I'm, I'm happy just to have it around the edge rather than try and fiddle about in the middle as well. So I'm just going to go all around the outside edge of my pages. I'm really happy with that. That's going to do what I want. I just wanted it. I felt the pages were a little plain. But I think with this stencil design around the edge, it, it's enough, but without being distracting, because the tags at the end of the day are the things that I'll be looking at. I didn't want anything too heavy in uh, design either, because some of the tags are ones that people have sent to me in Happy Mail or as part of a swap. And I want to be able to write on the page who sent them, um, because a lot of them have got the information on the back of the tag. But obviously, as I'm sticking the tag down, I'll lose the, the ability to see that. But for my, for my own record, so that I can remember who sent them, I'm just going to write people's personal information, their name, and if the date or, or the theme is on there, I'll write that down as well on the page next to the tag. And then that information is, is saved then and it isn't lost and that's nice. So I'm just going to continue to go through um, the book doing this. You could choose different designs, different colours on different pages. 
I'm keeping this neutral because my tags are all different styles, different colours. And I don't want to be wondering, do I need to match things up or coordinate them? This way, it, it's just a, a neutral um, sort of abstract design uh, and I can put anything on that page and it's going to look all right. So I say, I'll just continue going through my book until I've got to the end and then I'll be back again. All my pages are stenciled now and I'm really happy with that and I've decorated the cover as well. I decided I wanted to um, cover the outside of the book so I've used, these are a couple of jelly prints that I did um, with using the magazine resist technique. I'll link that video up in the corner there. And this was one of my favourites. I loved how this one turned out. So I've put that on the front and onto the spine. And then I put this one on the back. Um, I, I just, I think they're nice. I like them. I've stuck them on using this deco art, um, Americana decoupage. It's the one for paper. And it gives a nice matte finish, so I've stuck those on and sealed them. And that's my covers decorated. So now it's just time to get on and put my tags inside. Um, for now, I'm going to be putting tags just on the right-hand page. And I'm going to go through, and that'll just about fill this. But then when I make more tags, I can go on and put them on the left-hand page as well. But for now, it's just going to give a nice even spread throughout the book. And to stick these down, I'm using, this is my Cosmic Shimmer Acrylic Glue. As always, I have it in these little um, bottles with the fine tip on it, so I can apply it precisely. And it's a good, strong glue. Um, and, and it sticks everything pretty quickly. So I'm just going to go ahead now and start putting all my tags into the book. And then when I come back, I can do a little flip through and we can have a look at them all. So now I'm back with my finished tag journal. It's uh, quite a considerably thicker um, than it was before. And so I've added a closure. And to do that, I just used my crocodile to punch a hole in the front and the back cover. Um, I popped a little metal eyelet in there and then just threaded through this um, nice sort of cotton tape ribbon tape that's in there and i can change that if i want to it's just looped through um but i just needed something to be able to sort of squash this shut so as promised here's a little flick through of the the various tags that we've got inside and any that were sent to me by somebody else that aren't, aren't made by me i've made a note of the name of the artist on the page um so that i can remember who sent it and it's just a really nice way of, of gathering together some smaller pieces that you might not know where else to pop them. They may be a bit too small to go in a standard sized art journal, but this is it's just a nice way. I like repurposing books and I, I, I'm very happy with how this has turned out. But as you can see, there's, there's all sorts of uh, designs in here. And they just, it's nice to have a collection together as a whole. Now, I also do quite a few trades with postcards and um, postcards would fit in a book format like this. So I may well um, do that in future. As you can see, I've almost made it to the back of my book. And then I can go back and put them on facing pages as well. Uh, that's why I've got plenty of length in these ribbon ties because obviously if I double the number of tags in here, my book's going to get considerably fatter than it already is. So I hope that uh, you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope um, maybe it's given you a few ideas of how to store either artwork that you've made or things that you may have received from other people. Uh, it's nice to have it in some sort of format where you can look at it and enjoy it rather than sort of bits here and there. I'm really pleased that I've now got somewhere where these are all kept all together. Plus I'm really happy that I've found a use for this print, especially this was my favorite print, but also this one. 
So for, yeah, those of you who watched that video um, and were asking, what do you do with the prints? Well, there's one answer and I shall be making another video very shortly with some more ideas of, of what I use my prints for. So all that remains to be said today is if you did enjoy this, please leave me a thumbs up as always. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I'm now at, I think, just over 1800 subscribers. I can't believe it. I'm so thrilled that you're enjoying my videos. I get really good comments. Um, I'm glad that you enjoy the style and that everything's quite straightforward and easy to follow. So, um, yeah, until next time, um, that's all. So thank you and goodbye.